Hello. As a regular viewer of my workshop show, which I'm sure you are, you'll be more than familiar with this, our workshop workhorse, my Land Rover. What you might not be familiar with is what I've done to it. I had it from new, so nine years old now, but about five years ago, I took it to some of my favorite people in the world at Bowler for their stage two performance upgrade, which means it's had new chip, new turbo, bigger intercooler, all of that results in a lot more power, up from the standard 122 brake to 195, but the torque is the most impressive thing at 540 something Newton meters. It's got grunt. It's actually quick. You can threaten and worry hot hatches with it. The only issue there is it doesn't just threaten and worry hot hatches. All of that power also threatens and worries its own drivetrain. It has a tendency to tear itself to bits. There's a spline shaft output on the transfer box that goes into a splined cup. And with that much twist going through it, if you're not incredibly delicate with the clutch and the accelerator, it'll just chew itself up. We've already replaced it once this year. It's not an entirely small job. It costs money and time. And the workshop is not there to fix my cars. It's there to fix customers' cars. And as a result of all of that, I'm very strict and never let anybody else drive this because I don't trust anybody to have the mechanical sympathy you need to avoid tearing it to bits. But then there's another problem because due to a unique combination of incompetency and logistics, I've ended up with the Land Rover and the XK at home. And I need to get both of these to the workshop today. We're working on this and well, the Land Rover just is my workshop life. So I've got a big problem. I'm going to have to let somebody drive the Land Rover because I'm taking this. Mike, you've got a driving license. I do. Oh God. Can you take my Land Rover into work for me? I am quite mechanically sympathetic. I like to think I am. You say you are. <laughs> Honestly, one clunky gear shift in that, one dump of the clutch, and dink, those splines will go. Okay, I'll just be careful, which is just really easy it's up. Just feed it, honestly, every shift. And also, don't labour it in a high gear, because we're going to have to go through some 40 mile an hour speed limits and 50. Okay. And in sixth, as soon as you uptake power, boonk, you'll feel it. It's just like lash through the drive. Okay. It's, it's as though there's a cush drive that's gone all bagging, punk, and it's not. It's those splines in that cup. So just rev it, basically. Mm, yes, <laughs> no. <laughs> just really, really soft shifts. I know it's a big, ugly old Defender, but treat it like it's a... 1950s Ferrari. Just okay. Feed it in. You can trust me. I don't. I don't, but I've got no. I'll shot. drive this. No, because <laughs> oh god, it's a lose lose. No, take that, but good luck. Okay, are the keys in it? Yeah. Oh god. Why have I done that? I had no choice. If my insurers are watching, <laughs> God, I hope they're not. If my insurers are watching, he's an experienced helmsman, aren't you, Mike? Yes. Carry on. We'll go convoy style. How hard can it be? All my toys are going to get broken. Personally, I'd have a 140 or a 120, but he's done a, well, Neil and Anthony have done a cracking job with that. Now, just don't rear-end Richard Hammond in his classic XK150. Oh, electric windows. You know, clunking yet. See, Richard, I can be mechanically sympathetic. I am an engineer, after all. It's been a while, but I've got the sheet of paper that tells me that I am. Yeah, this could definitely shift, especially with Hammond driving. Of course, I'm taking it easy because this is not the time to, as Hammond put it, hassle hot hatches. The shape of that Jag, that rear window. It's quite cool knowing that it's Richard Hammond driving that, isn't it? Going for the overtake. Oh, we're moving now. So this is what Defender feels like at motorway speed. Sketchy, I think is the way to put it. You have to constantly steer. Okay, let the fueling commence. You see, this is exactly my thinking. We're not allowed to use as much petrol as we've been using, I get that. Well, what do I want to put it in? Something dreary and boring to drive along the M4? No, I'll use an electric car for that. But to go scampering around the lanes to the workshop, 
Well, if I'm going to use petrol, I'm going to use it in something I like. This. Actually, I'm not going to fill this because it's being transported. So that will be enough of that. 1.25 millilitres per litre. So, protecting my valves. Well, that's what it says on the bottle. I don't mind the extra bit of faff. It's something I care about. I mean, I do use an electric car and I plug it in and I drive along the M4 listening to the radio. This is my hobby. This is a pastime. This is a passion. It demands a little bit more effort. And, you know, my carbon footprint is from this, but not fashion, obviously. Is Drive Tribe paying for that I'll tank? I'll put everything on the business side. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see that bit. Boom. The best fuel is free fuel. Oh, yeah. How much are we talking? I thought I put 30 quid in here. I didn't go crazy because it's been transported to the London car shop. It just means me and Lucy don't get lunch, but that's fine. Sorry, my where is it? <laughs> all right, I'll buy you a sandwich. So you, you're picking up all the fuel, that as well? I'll pick up all the fuel. I'm going to go out with Drive Tribe more often. It's brilliant. Right, um, so follow me. Cool. Um, Got to get that sorted as well. Where have I put the key? And we're away. Now, of course I was going to pay for his fuel because really he's allowing me to live my boyhood dream. So it's the least I could do. So you guys will probably have seen this car in the show. And if you haven't, click the link in the description below. I can guarantee you will absolutely love Hammond's new show. But for you guys that have watched it, which car out of any car that's been in the show would you like to have on your driveway? Would it be this Defender or his XK150 or maybe the Jensen once it's finished? Tell us in the comments below. And we made it without a single crunch. I will take that. Oh, there's some cool stuff kicking about here.